my garbage person of the week is just, I, I just hate him. He's awful, he does bad things, he hurts people, and he does it for money and clout. Take a look at this. So monkeypox is about the coolest name ever for a disease. Can't come tonight, I got the monkey. But they are changing the name because racism or something. Well, for once, we don't know who they are. We're not going to allow it. We're going to change the name this time. We're going to do it with the public's help because democracy is real. So we had a vote. There was no ballot harvesting. You can trust our counting. And the new name for monkeypox is now officially, and we're declaring it, Schlong COVID. That won our audience election with about 40% of the vote. So let Rochelle Walensky at the CDC know her number is 1-800-232-4636. Wait for the prompt on monkeypox and make your voice heard because it's still a democracy. The important thing that you need to know is that, of course, he was joking around. He was being very, very funny. And it is, it's very funny, I think, Brett. I think we can all agree, right? It's, it's funny because it's a play on long COVID which many of his viewers will suffer with for years because they listen to him, that's kind of funny. It's funny because he's encouraging them to call up the head of the CDC who's a woman and talk about penises to her. He's encouraging them actively to do that, that I think is pretty funny. I think it's funny, especially because uh, he thinks that this is going to be a disease that's contained only inside of the, the gay community. And he thinks that's funny. And so that's why it's schlong, you get it? Because it doesn't matter, this disease, because it only affects gay men. So that's that's funny and there's just a lot that's funny about it. I think it's pretty funny. I should start watching his show, Brett, what do you think? Can we ready play out B please? Because I have something to point out right now. Uh, when you have it, take it. You know who came up with schlong COVID? On August 12th, 2021, pointed out <laughs> thankfully by our friend Matt Lieb, husband <laughs> to uh, Francesca Fiorentini. Yes, to be Me, clear, that's you not joints. about monkeypox. I clear. came up with that. Thanks. Yes. That's why Matt added me. Yeah, my that, guy. Like <laughs> that. Yeah. But let's be clear: you're not mocking a community being affected by monkeypox. Let's be clear about that. No, I am mocking the fact that if you don't get vaccinated and you get it, you have a higher likelihood for impotence. So. Which is Sad and true, unfortunately. Long COVID, it um, makes sense there. It's not hateful toward the gay community. God, he's the that, worst. Exactly. No, and 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 also, it's it's funny for so many other reasons. It's funny because he's joking that we still have a democracy. You get it because you can vote in this. But you get the joke. It's because he doesn't want us to be a democracy. He doesn't want your vote to count for actual substantive things. And in fact, his entire job is to get you to focus on nonsense. So that you won't vote on actual things that affect your 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 economy, your life, all that. That's funny too. Why don't you guys get why this is funny? Don't you get don't you get the ultimate joke, which is that that guy has an audience of literally millions of people. He's an incredibly powerful, rich, famous person who takes tons of people and gets them to vote against their interests. This is really funny, and I don't think that all of you are understanding the many layers of this awesome joke. That totally won't result in even more anti gay animus and harassment and people not taking monkeypox seriously because it's not an STI. It doesn't only affect gay people. It can potentially go across America if we don't take it seriously. And it doesn't really seem that most people are at this point. So, yeah, it's pretty funny. I don't know. I think it's funny. I just wanted to end the week with a joke. So, thank you, everyone. I hope that you got a kick out of that. Uh, by the way, um, can we let's go to this last graphic for one sec? Uh, this Tucker Carlson graphic. His other considerations were Hunter Hives, midterm variant, Adam Schiffels. I, I, other than the fact that his audience likes when he talks about Hunter Biden and Adam Schiff, I don't understand what either of them have to do with this. Is he implying that they're gay? Okay. I don't even know what, I don't think he knows why he's making that reference. He just knows that he has to say Hunter, and they'll be like, yeah, Hunter. The two least funny things in the universe is when anyone tells you what you can and can't joke about because it's too serious. That is wildly unfunny. The only thing less funny than that is when this joke people on the right think that because folks are like, actually, that's a bad joke because it's a bad joke. Yes, they think they are they are funny because they're being crappy. Like that's they not what that makes a joke. Funny is. Just yeah. saying the meanest thing is not funny, you doinks. 100%. Well, those are our garbage people of the week, but 39,000 of you voted and here are your top five. Coming in number five with only 1% of the vote, 
Jane Lynch for her insane comments on women's voices. So apparently didn't people didn't have too much of a problem with that. Number four with seven percent of the vote is JD Vance for his wild comments about staying in bad marriages. That was that was this week. Jesus, a lot happens in a week. Uh, coming at number three with 21% of the vote is Glenn Thompson for voting against his own son's gay marriage. That was fun. <laughs> number two, 26% of the vote is Matt Gates for body shaming a teenage activist. Although the good side is that that resulted in over $1.5 million being raised. Uh, but number one, 45% of the vote is Marjorie Green for calling for the GOP to become a party of explicit Christian nationalism. Let's not waste time getting like Jewish people to be Republicans or whatever. God, she's just the worst. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.